Today's video is about using RDS, MySQL or MariaDB server from a Lambda function. A database such as MySQL is probably the most important part of creating an app. It's definitely something I use in every project. And it's a common question whether MySQL is a good match for serverless or is it better to use a NoSQL server such as MongoDB or something similar. And in my opinion, the answer is definitely yes. It's a very good match and MySQL and serverless work great together. And with the help of AWS RDS, it's very easy to set up a MySQL server to use in our Lambda functions. In today's video, we'll take a look at how to connect from a Lambda function to an RDS server in the most efficient way. We'll also take a look at RDS proxy and what is it used for. RDS proxy is another service from AWS and we'll take a look what is the purpose of it, why is it useful and how to use it. I've created this Lambda function called RDS test. It uses pretty much the default settings. I've also created an RDS database called database one. And in this case as well, it's pretty much uh, all the defaults. I use the MySQL community engine. Uh, it's a small instance. And what we need to take from here is the endpoint. This is the address of our RDS server. I also have this simple TypeScript file with the handler. I'll link to my previous videos in which I showed how to create a handler like this and how to deploy it to uh, Lambda automatically. So in here it's pretty much empty. We have these four variables, uh, which we use to create connection object, which we'll use to connect to our MySQL database. The host is the address of our database that we created. And when I created the database, I also chose a username and a password. So our username is admin and the password is uh, demo pass. We didn't create a database on our server yet, so I'll keep it empty. And now let's try to connect to this MySQL server from the CLI to see that it works. So we'll use the MySQL client. We'll set the host and the username. And the connection works. We don't have any databases yet. We didn't create any. So let's create the first database. We named our database testdb. So let's copy it into our configuration file. Now let's create our first table. We'll call the table vals and it will have three columns. The ID, which will be an integer auto incremented. Uh, and this will be our primary key. A column name key, which will be a string and a column name val, which will also be a string. And now let's insert a row into our new table. So in our new row, the key and the val will be the values hello world. So currently in our table, we only have a single row. So now that we know that our RDS database works, let's try to connect from our Lambda function to this RDS instance. So we have the connection object. And in this project, I'm going to use a library called Next.js. This is a node query builder, and I really recommend this library. And we'll use MySQL node library. So we need to install both. And then in the handler, we'll actually try to do two things. First, we'll need to create the connection to the MySQL database. And second, we will use this connection to execute queries. So the way Lambda function works, every time a new request is received, the handler will be executed, which means that if we'll put the connection to our MySQL database within the handler, a new connection will be created for every request. That's why we want to move out this connection to outside of the handler. The way it will work is when AWS will create an instance of this Lambda function, a connection will be created. And then all the other requests that Lambda function will handle will be handled by the handler and the same connection will be reused for all of them. This is much more efficient than trying to create a connection on every request. So let's actually create the connection and see how it works. I've imported the next object from the next library. And I'm going to pass it two params. First one is a client, which will be MySQL. And this basically tells Next to use the MySQL library that we installed in here. And then it also expects the connection object. 
If we were using the MySQL library directly, we would just pass it the connection object. But since we use next, it will pass the connection object to the MySQL library for us. And now that our connection was created, we can use this connection within our handler. Let's also create a counter in here. Every time our handler will be called, we'll increment our counter. And now let's add a few queries to our database. What we're going to do in our handler is first of all, we're going to insert a new row every time there is a new request to our Lambda function. So every time the handler is called, we are going to create a new row and we'll add the counter to it. Then we're going to select all the rows from our table and then log them to the console. Now let's deploy our function and see that it works. In the previous video, I showed how to create a deployment script such as this one. Send a link to this video below. Now that our function was deployed, we can go to the console and try to run it. So we'll go to the test tab, invoke. And as a result, we can see that there are two rows now. First, the row that we created using the MySQL CLI. And then the second row with the first execution of this Lambda function. So if we'll call it again, we should have three rows now. So the first time we call this function on execution number one, the connection was created and the count variable was initiated to zero. And then when we call the handler, the count was incremented to one. And that's how we got the first execution. But on the next, the following execution, we reused the same connection. So the count variable was still in memory. That's how we got the value two for it. Even though we called the fu handler function twice, the instance of the Lambda function still kept this count variable in memory. And in a similar way, it also kept this connection to MySQL in memory as well. So every time we call our Lambda function, we'll keep reusing this connection and the counter will keep being incremented. However, if we'll deploy a new version of our function, let's try to publish new version. And now if we'll invoke it again, we'll see that the latest row that was added was execution one. So when we deploy a new version of the Lambda function, a new connection will be created and this variable will be, of course, reset to zero. So we can't rely on the fact that this connection will always be reused, but at least we'll be able to reuse it per instance of the Lambda function. And it's really up to AWS how many instances of this Lambda function will be created. For example, if our Lambda function starts handling a lot of requests at the same time, then AWS might decide that it will need to create more instances of this Lambda function. And every instance will have its own MySQL connection. So these connections won't be reused. But then for this instance, all the requests that will be handled by it will reuse the same MySQL connection that we created here. Let's say this is our Lambda function and my SQL RDS database. And we connect from our Lambda function to the database as we just saw. Then let's say we have another Lambda function. So this function will have its own connection to our MySQL database. And then maybe a third function and a fourth and a fifth and etc. And it's possible that one of these functions handles a lot of traffic. And then AWS will start several instances of these functions and then each one of them will have their own connection. It will actually work pretty well for even a above average number of requests because the MySQL database will be able to handle all of these requests and the different connections to it. So I would say for an average or even above average amount of traffic, you don't need to worry about having too many connections. However, if you start making a lot of connections and you have a lot of functions like this, then the MySQL database might be overwhelmed with the number of connections and will start having issues with handling all of them. And this is where RDS proxy comes in. Because with an RDS proxy, instead of connecting directly from the Lambda function to the MySQL server, we're going to connect to the RDS proxy instead and then the proxy will connect to the MySQL database for us. This way, the proxy will be able to manage all the connections to the MySQL database much more efficiently. It will handle failovers better and make sure that the connections that it does make will be reused and that the MySQL database will not be overwhelmed by the number of connections. An RDS proxy also gives the benefit of security because when we use RDS proxy, we give it the username and password to the MySQL database. And then we don't need to use these username and password in the Lambda functions. 
we can just use IAM to manage the permissions of which Lambda function can connect to the RDS proxy and in turn to the MySQL database. And since we use IAM to manage all the permissions for all of our AWS services, we'll get the benefit of being able to use it for this use case as well and avoid putting the username and password to the MySQL database in our Lambda functions. So now let's convert the connection from our Lambda function. So instead of connecting directly to the MySQL database, we will now create an RDS proxy and then connect to it and let it handle all the connections to the MySQL database for us. By the way, my YouTube channel is all about practical videos about AWS, such as the one you're watching. So if you enjoyed this video and you learned something from it, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Now let's create the proxy that we're going to use in our Lambda function. So in the Amazon RDS console, we'll go to proxies and create proxy. We'll give our proxy a name. Then we'll choose MySQL as the engine. We'll choose the database that we are going to use. Currently, we're connecting to this database directly from the Lambda function, but we're going to establish a connection from the proxy to the database. So the last thing we have left is somehow let the proxy know about the username and the password for our database so it can connect to it. And we're going to do that using the secrets manager. So we'll create a new secret. And when creating a new secret, there is an option to create credentials for an RDS database. So we'll give it the username and the password. Password is demo pass, the same password that we used in our Lambda function. And finally, we'll choose the database that we're going to connect to from the proxy. We'll give our secret a name. We'll disable automatic rotation. Now in the RDS proxy settings, we can choose this secret from the options. In our example, we won't use IAM for authentication. We'll keep using the username and the password. But as mentioned before, you can use IAM authentication when using the RDS proxy. And this way, you don't need to pass the username and password to the proxy. A proxy is currently being created. And once it will finish, we should have a proxy endpoint. When the proxy endpoint is ready, we're going to copy it. And in our Lambda function, if you'll go back to the configuration, the host is currently set to the address of our RDS database, but we're going to replace it with the address of the proxy. Everything else stays the same, but instead of connecting directly to the RDS MySQL database, we will now connect to the RDS proxy. And then in turn, the proxy will connect to our database. We still need to pass the username and password and the proxy will match it to the ones that we stored in the secret manager and then use these credentials to connect to the database. So now everything should keep working the same as it worked before. Let's try to deploy this Lambda function and see that it still works. There's one last thing that we need to do before we try to run this function. And that is to let this function know that we're going to use the proxy we just created. So we'll go to configuration database proxies and add database proxy. Since we already connected the proxy, we'll choose an existing database proxy and click add. Now we should be able to run our function just like before. So we'll go to test and run invoke and our function still works. And we can see in the results that it still reads the rows from our database. However, now instead of connecting directly to the MySQL database, we connect to the RDS proxy that we created and we let this RDS proxy to manage the connection to the MySQL database for us. So at this point, we can add more Lambda functions and configure all of them to use the same proxy that we created for our database. And this proxy will know to manage all these connections efficiently, reuse them, handle failovers, and make sure that our database is not overwhelmed by too many connections. In this video, we saw how to establish an efficient connection from a Lambda function to a MySQL RDS database. Then we saw what is the purpose of an RDS proxy. We created one. We adjusted our Lambda function configuration to connect to the proxy instead of directly to the database. And saw what is the purpose of RDS proxy in terms of reusing connections and making the connection more efficient and error-proof. If you learned something from this video, please leave it a like so it will reach more people. And if you'd like to be notified when I upload more videos similar to this one, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel.